about today is uh, basically EDC survival gear and talking, giving a little bit of showing of different clever little things that you can do to make sure that your EDC is also kind of survival rated because one big thing up here in Alaska is that you want to make sure that you know whatever happens if you're just traveling to go to some business or if you're traveling to go do something and all of a sudden you're in a car accident or you need to or you're stranded whatever or even if you find someone that's stranded and they need assistance like they need different survival supplies maybe they need medical equipment not large-scale stuff obviously but just smaller stuff or maybe it's just that you cut yourself on accident like I did here um, and you need medical supplies. So today we're going to be going over EDC survival slash preparedness gear and I'm giving you guys some ideas of stuff that I carry around every day uh, for preparedness in everyday setting. So as always guys please do not forget to comment, like, share, and subscribe if you want to see more awesome Alaskan content just like this. So without any further ado, let's actually begin to roll into some of this stuff. So there's no particular order for me. I didn't really think, or I just kind of decided to just go out here and just do this video. So there isn't necessarily any order to this. Just kind of picking it off myself. The only stuff that isn't on me is of course my neck stuff. So that stuff's off me. So I don't have to like pull it off you guys. So anyways, the first thing is that I just retrofitted, this is actually a little Samsung earbud box. And if you guys ever get like a Samsung phone, you guys know what I'm talking about. But the earbuds come in this actually pretty cool uh, watertight or kind of watertight box, or I guess you could call it a box. It's kind of rectangular and it's semi-translucent. And this thing is actually pretty cool, especially when you put a ranger band. What I did was I put a ranger band over it and then I put it, I loaded it full of matches, waterproof matches in this case and a couple strikers just so that I can have a bunch of matches and a convenient little stowage unit that is watertight and pretty everyday resistant and then I just pretty much just throw it in any pocket that I have available in this case I just throw it in this one and it's it doesn't make too much noise but I have about 50 to 60 I think maybe even 70 matches in there and I could actually chalk this thing way with way more matches that was kind of what impressed me with this particular container was that I mean I still have room in here for probably another 30 matches so I could carry up to around a hundred matches in this thing and uh, that's a lot of matches so that's just a quick little survival thing um, but really there's a bunch of things what you kind of want to do when you're trying to find a match container or a match box just try and look for something that's relatively sealed. You don't necessarily want to go with like an Altoids tin because unless you duct tape around the seam, it's not very waterproof. But what I liked about this one was with the aid of a Ranger band, it's pretty much waterproof because the actual way it seals is it seals below. It's kind of hard to explain, but it kind of snaps and seals um, <coughs> below its line. So you see a line that where it would open but it seals below that, so it kind of makes it more water resistant. And if you add a ranger band that's constantly uh, having downward or inward pressure on the entire vessel, it makes it a lot more waterproof. So the next thing I'm carrying just in, you know, another pocket is, if I can get it out here conveniently, is my uh, full on EDC kind of my survival slash really medical kit. So, I, as I kind of realized that really I carry a lot of uh, equipment with me for survival and bushcraft already, so I don't tend to carry too much um, other stuff like for specifically like survival kits, and I'm going to do a video on this kit actually itself, but this little kit here is like I said my Altoid survival slash primarily medical tin, and so basically I have here just out regular Altoids tin. But what I did with it is, one, I put some nylon rope. This is not paracord, but paracord takes up a lot of room. So this is about a couple feet of twisted nylon braided rope. So it's nothing hugely fancy, and the tinsel strength is probably good enough, in my opinion. I don't really need super strength. Then next to that, I have a sandwich bag folded up with rubber bands. And then next to that, <clears throat> I have, um, I'm not gonna go into this in detail, but I have like a little Victorinox. And then after that is all pretty much medical stuff. I have a little bit more survival stuff 
I'm not gonna go into because I wanna save that for a separate video, but I have a lot of medical stuff in there. So from alcohol, cleaning pads, to big bandages, gauze bandages, I carry a whole bunch of different medical gear in here. And I like that because like I said, was the primary reason I didn't want another full on, full blown kind of survival kit with me is because I'm already carrying a lot of things. I'm already carrying fire starting methods like ferro rods. Um, I'm already carrying my like fixed blade knives and stuff like that. I don't really need anything super survivally really. So I just kind of did a plastic bag so that I could have that little bit of extra survival, survivability <coughs> kind of level to it so I can actually hold water because none of these things really do a good job at holding water. And you know, I threw in some rope because I don't really carry much of that on my body so <clears throat> just kind of did a couple things and just brought this up to a little bit of a survival kit but primarily it's a medical kit because i don't really carry band-aids or any of that on my body in other places so <clears throat> it was nice to have an actual addition of just a really small altoids kit that uh, can double as a first aid slash survival kit so kind of moving on to other stuff, I mean obviously if you EDC knives, you know, you can be like, well I carry this knife and you know this automatically qualifies for good survival stuff. And that may or may not be true. These two you can tell are, I carry side by side and so they're kind of like interlocked with each other. But I'm going to undo them here real fast. So you guys can tell I definitely carry uh, these two together a lot they get kind of bound together so anyways like i was saying this is my ferro rod it's an exotac nano striker xl it's nothing hugely new because i do obviously carry this a lot i love that system <coughs> that nano striker xl is a fantastic ferro rod to edc i just wear it around my neck kind of like a pendant <clears throat> so next to that and something else i do recommend is i know a lot of us carry knives for you know everyday carry just in general and you know we were like okay you know I have this folding knife so I'm prepared and you know that's definitely not bad and having a folding knife is better than nothing in an EDC environment but I try and stress people to go for a smaller fixed blade as well and this one's kind of big but you know anything from a Topps MSK to like an SE3 uh, Drat 3 or even this kind of pull force SE and pull force this November one's about the same size as an SE3 so it's, they're about the same size. This one looks a little bit bigger, but trust me, it is around the same size <clears throat> as an SC3. But those knives, I really like. I I have a Rat 3, an SC3, and this Pull Force November 1. They're all around the same size, and I really love carrying any one of those for specifically uh, survival tasks. If I have to um, <clears throat> baton wood, do more industrial tasks that my folders may not withstand the abuse of. So I do recommend carrying a larger, still not like gigantic, but larger fixed blade, either kind of hidden tucked back behind you, like on the small of your back, or if it's more convenient, around your neck. So those are some kind of uh, ideas for carrying a larger fixed blade for more industrious tasks. So aside from that, there is kind of your obvious like flashlights, and I'm not really going to go over too much other things because you guys are likely already carrying those and you know a flashlight's good for survival but in all honesty it's also really good for just day-to-day -day life i use my flashlight almost every day in the winter so i can't really say that i just carry it for survival i definitely carry it for survival but uh, i really use it every day so anyways guys hope you've enjoyed this shorter video i wanted to do this video primarily to kind of give you guys some ideas get you thinking about how you can carry more um, <clears throat> kind of survivally stuff on an everyday level so that you're more prepared to face the needs of special things like i said cuts and wounds aren't an everyday thing i hope so so um you know having a, a having a first aid kit though can be really important anyways guys that's all for now god bless and i'm out